Hello everyone, welcome back to Amity Bloom. My name is Nazzy. It's been a while since the last time we have spoken together. Today, I just want to play in my scrap journal. I have some papers next to me, and I even have a napkin next to me. And we're going to see what I end up creating inside of the book. So I'm really excited with the things that I have. Of course, this is my scrap journal, so I'm going to be using scraps of paper left over from some projects that I'm making right now. I'm actually, I should give you guys a little sneak peek since it will be shared later on throughout the week, at the end of this week. But I'm working on this class for the journal that I have shared with you all, my Artist in Bloom collection. I'm working on creating this course. It's pretty much already done. But I'm using some of the papers that I had left over to use in my scrap journal. I have different sized scrap papers in front of me. Some are full sheets, some are itty bitty little tiny strips of paper left over. And I want to see how I can incorporate them on my journal pages to create a layered effect. This is the page that I'm going to be using. As you can see, it's very stark white. <laughs> it's extremely white. And this page is more of my style, the cream colored paper. So I'm going to cover this up, I think, with the bigger scraps. And then I'm going to work from there to see what else I can create on this page. Let me see what I end up doing with my scraps. And hopefully this entire spread will be transformed into something different. We are starting off this journaling spread by something that's not so different from me, using my scraps of paper. I'm taking my 8.5 by 11 sheet piece of paper and I'm just ripping it with my hands in the middle. No scissors, just really easy and simple. Gluing it down to cover up that white page and you can see the instant difference. It's not as stark and it's for me actually, it's not as intimidating. But I know a lot of people do love that white balance, especially if you're going to watercolor or do some art journaling. Now I'm taking a leftover notepad. I purchased some notepads from AliExpress, I believe, from my Traveler's Notebook, and I wanted to use them in my journal as well. I thought they were really pretty, and I love the fern image. So I'm taking a die set piece of paper that has a die cut out of it in the middle, that little square, and I'm taking some tape, masking tape of course, that's my favorite tape at the moment, and I am taping down the fern image on the back because I want to turn this into a pocket taking double-sided tape on the bottom and on the top to make it kind of like a little belly band, but it's a very big one. As you can see, it's taking up pretty much the whole entire space of my journal, but I really loved that effect. And then here I am taking a napkin. I went to Tuesday morning and I purchased some napkins and I wanna decoupage them onto my pages. I am not as talented as the designers and the artists that designed those images, so this is a kind of cheat way of creating a watercolored and a beautiful image on your paper without using paint, and you're repurposing something that a lot of people tend to use and throw away. So I just fuzzy cut around that little flower. I loved it, as you can see, my little happy hands. And I'm taking some scrap pieces of paper that were left over from my Artist in Bloom journal course, taking some Mod Podge, and I'm just gluing it on the bottom. I've been using Mod Podge a lot because it's super easy to use, and when you're working with little pieces of paper, your scraps, it becomes a nuisance when you reach for your glue stick every five seconds. So use your Mod Podge if you want to create in your own scrap journal or if you want to create collages with pieces of scrap paper. I am using a paintbrush to spread the Mod Podge evenly behind the napkin, the fuzzy cut floral. You want to be very careful if you try this out because it is very fragile since you're working with napkins. Just making sure you add a good amount of glue on the bottom and then on the top to seal it in place. When you're wanting to decoupage anything, I suggest keeping with the same background color so the floral image had a white background. And because my papers are in the cream and white family, it blends in beautifully and it looks as if the floral is painted on or it melted on top of the papers and adds to that layered effect that we're trying to go for. So now on the other page, all of it has script on it, so it's very difficult for me to journal on top of that. So I'm taking some note paper. This note sheet I also got from Tuesday morning. I loved the botanical feel of this whole page. And then I'm taking scraps from my Artist in Bloom class and I'm going to use them to create a layered pocket 
that I can also journal on top of. So it's serving as a decorative purpose and as a functional purpose. And I chose the side of the paper that has no script on it since I already have a lot of script in the background. Taking some double sided tape and I'm only going to be gluing a part of the edge of the paper because I do want a little bit of it peeking through about half an inch or so so that you see those layers forming the pockets. So many things can be layered, not just pockets, but many elements to a journal, how you create a journal, and then how you decorate a journal. And that's what I talk about in the um, Artist in Bloom journal course. And I'm very excited to share that with you guys this Friday. This week has all been about layering for me. And when you start to layer inside of your journal, it makes you really excited because you expand the possibilities of what can really be put and decorated into a journal. Here I'm adding my last little layered pocket using the rest of that craft paper, taking some journaling cards. I like to use little notepads, leftover note sheets and notepads for journaling. And then I'm going to add some double sided tape on all three sides so that I can seal that pocket in on the edge and on the top and bottom. I am choosing some more images from my napkin to decoupage. It was a little bit too bare for me and I wanted to add a couple more images from that beautiful napkin. I decided not to fuzzy cut this floral and just leave it as a square because it reminded me of like a little sticker, like a washi sticker. I'm repeating the same method of using the Mod Podge to glue it down and then seal it on the top. And I end up noticing later on that I am actually enclosing the belly band by sticking that down on the side, but I'll show you what I do to tackle that problem later on. Here I'm taking the other part of that napkin. It has some leaves printed on it, and I wanted to add it on the side where the little birdie and the nest are, and I was thinking of putting it on the top or on the side. I decided to just put it on the side as I felt like putting it on the upper portion looked a little bit awkward because it was like defying gravity in a way. <laughs> I don't know, I'm weird like that in my journals sometimes, but I'm taking my Mod Podge, just gluing it down, and then here I'm taking a little X-Acto knife to open up that pocket that I closed up. And now my belly band is functional again, so sometimes we end up decorating and get carried away and seal our pockets, but you can always find ways around that. Just like life, you get little hiccups and bumps but you can always work your way through it. So now I'm taking some scrap pieces of paper that I'm going to be journaling on and adding more layers to the already layered pocket and surprisingly this page wasn't that bulky like I thought it would be because all of the papers are very thin it doesn't add too much bulk. And then here I'm flipping through my journal trying to find some ephemera that I can include. That is the journal that I'm going to be sharing in the course in a couple of days. And I found this beautiful vintage music note paper that I'm going to be journaling on. And to contrast and complement the black tones in the music paper, I wanted to take a stamp and grab some black ink and stamp it on the top and on the sides. I felt like it needed a strong color because everything is very subdued and white and pastel and if I'm being honest I just wanted a reason to use my new rubber stamps that I purchased. So playing around with that and it's finally time to start journaling. I wanted to write a little quote to myself in the negative die where I placed the fern notepad and I ended up writing your soul goes through layers just like a flower's petal. I always like including an inspirational quote or phrase in my journals to kind of inspire my writing process and sometimes when I can't find one I like to make one up and I like to always use symbolism when it comes to flowers. It's really special to me and it just gives me that little extra push of confidence to get my words onto paper. And when I'm journaling about something that's meaningful to me, I always give it a title. So the title of this page is A Time of Growth. While you're growing, going through life, you know, experiencing all the different moments that life has to offer, you go through layers. Every layer is a different experience and adds to the person and the character that you are. And I was journaling about how this past year I have discovered so many layers of my petals <laughs> that I didn't know I had and some good some bad but overall it's all an experience and it all helps me be a better person and it all adds to my 
book of wisdom that I will have written one day when I am older and I can, you know, tell my loved ones all of my stories and everything that I've learned. So, going back to the journal spread, we're getting a little deep here. <laughs> going to grab some of my vintage wallpaper. Oh, I'm drooling, you guys. This is 1920s wallpaper. I purchased some wallpapers recently for a special project and I wanted to make an inspirational card. And we talk about this more in the course, but I like including little decorative pieces and elements that add to the inspiration. Of course they add decoration, but most importantly, they make you want to create something. I think it's important to open up your journal and see elements, papers, words, phrases that make you smile and that remind you of why you're journaling and falling in love with this in the first place. So until next time, I hope that you guys have an incredibly beautiful day filled with peace and love. I will see you guys very, very soon to share more about the Artist in Bloom journal course. And I hope that you guys have an incredible day wherever you are. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.